Good evening. It is Tuesday, November 13th, and this is the regular council meeting of the City of Cross Lake. Um, I will call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As usual, we have some additions to the agenda, and basically these are um, added bills that need to be paid. So if we could have a motion on the floor for the approval of the additions to the agenda. So moved. Dave Shrub first, Gary Heacock second. Any further questions? If not, uh, all those in favor of the additions to the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next on our agenda, agenda is the consent calendar. As always, there's a lot of information in here, so I always suggest you take a look at it, see what's happening. Um, all items here listed are considered to be routine by the City Council and will be acted on in one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a citizen or council member so requests. Do we have a motion on the floor for the consent calendar? Approval of the consent calendar. I'll make that motion. Dave Nevin first, a second. I'll second it. Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We will move right on down to critical issues. And Shar, you have a report on the election. We just need to certify the results. Okay, and everybody has seen the results in their packet. I'll make that motion. Okay, Gary Heacock <coughs> first. Is there a second? I'll second that. Dave Shrub second. <coughs> All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And then we always go to our public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issues will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given a three-minute time limit. Are there any comments from the audience this evening? If not, we will continue on um, to the mayor's report. And for the last uh, couple months, you have heard the, uh, us address the concerns and the needs for an upgraded uh, municipal building. And basically, we've talked about the fire, the police, and the administrative office. However, we do have another um, public office that's, that also stands without any security, and that is our community center, where many, many people come through the door um, each and every day. And so this is one of the other items that we will look at when we continue the discussions on the future needs of our city. And along with that, I know Chip had some additional comments on that. And TJ, if you did too, that's perfectly fine. But Chip. From a, from a director's standpoint, um, I'm always sitting at my desk looking at everyone coming and passing through the doors. And uh, I wouldn't like to vision um, an incident happening, but you can never rule it out with, with the way our, our country has gone um, in the past 10 years with these uh, occurrences happening more prevalent, or they're more prevalent. Um, so I'd just like to either um, look at the building, um, our entrance, to see if we can secure it more, or maybe possibly um, hold classes for my staff and volunteers to find out what we would actually do in a situation that Hopefully it never happens. Thank you. Thank you. As we've said before, we can never say never again. Mm -hmm. 
I know over the last couple months we've been, you know, talking with Five Bugles and talking about remodels or building a new station. And a lot of discussion from my side of things was the fire service and how things have changed over the past 10, 15 years and what the firefighters are exposed to uh, each and every day. So basically what I, I handed out tonight was some of the uh, concerns of the firefighters from cancer awareness, uh, health and wellness, and then also some articles regarding uh, new build, what departments are doing to help with de decontamination areas, things like that. Just some reading, so get you up to speed on what's going on in the fire service and what um, we're dealing with every day now. So let's just add some information for you. Okay, great. Thank you. <coughs> Eric, did you have any comments that you wanted to make at this time? Regarding the uh, what to do in an active shooter situation, Sergeant Swanson has gone through the ALICE training and will be training city staff this coming year. We have it in the works and we're going to set up a date to do that. So Great. We're, we're preparing for that. Great. Education, okay? Thank you. Thank you so much. That ends the mayor's report. And so now we'll move on to the city administrator report. Mike? Thank you. Uh, item one under my report is a memo from uh, staff. For me, staff is requesting that the council approve closing city facilities on Monday, December 24th, which would allow all employees the opportunity to have Christmas Eve off for travel and other things if they would wish. Uh, the closing would include City Hall Public Works, except in the case of a snowstorm, of course, and the community center. We'd be required, employees would be required to either use a personal day, vacation, or compensatory time. Um, it's something we've done in the past, and um, if that's agreeable to the council, we'd like a motion. So to moved. Do that. Okay. I'll second it. First by Gary Heacock, second by uh, Dave Shrupp, that the offices will be closed on Monday, December 24th. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. On behalf of all, thank you, and I extend that from uh, all staff, too. Um, the second item under my report is a memo from the clerk regarding transient merchant permits. Uh, the current fees for transient merchant permits are $50 a day or $100 for the year. Um, what we would like to do is, is propose that the annual fee be eliminated and just keep the charge at $50 a day. The current ordinance limits sales to no more than 14 consecutive days, and we would like to propose that all sales are limited to 14 days, whether they are consecutive or not. Um, doing this would put us in uh, similar standing with our neighbors, our neighboring cities. Any questions? I'm sure Shar would be able to answer those. Are there any questions for Shar or Mike? So if not, can we have a motion from the floor uh, regarding the transient merchant permits? I'll make that motion to Dave, approve the also. recommendation. Dave Shrupp first, Dave Nevin second. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, thank you. The third and last item on my report is a letter from our auditors. They're requesting to be appointed as the auditors again for this year. The fee went up $500 for this year. That is the first price increase they've had in about, since I've been here anyways. Um, they're looking at $25,500 to perform the annual audit services and file the reports. And their tentative field work date is scheduled for um, the week of March 4th, 2019. And my recommendation to the council would be that we go ahead and uh, you go ahead and approve their audit letter so we can move forward and start with the field work. I will make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Dave Shrupp second, Patty Norgard first. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Now we'll go into our commission reports. Mr. Grumman. Good evening. Um, first item on my agenda, uh, background check policy. I would like to request to change the current background check policy. Um, as of right now, we have every two years, and with with the first or the second year, 
Um, it would just be a screening with coaches and volunteers who work directly with children. And I want to move that to every year we do a full um, screening of, or no, excuse me, full background check um, done rather than the public screenings just to be sure that we're um, looking at all angles um, when we hire coaches and volunteers. Any questions for TJ before we make a motion? Before we have a motion? I can have Eric Lee step up here too and kind of explain more if you would like. Okay. With the background checks that uh, I can complete, I didn't, don't get a full uh, criminal history. So it doesn't include juvenile, it doesn't include uh, um, anything that would be um, Department of Health, that type of stuff. So when he does background investigations, we have to send him out to the BCA. I think it's $15 a piece or something to that effect. He gets more of the child protection, um, that type of uh, criminal history. I can't do that for some reason. They don't allow uh, police departments access to that information on a volunteer or an employee background. So that's why okay. they have to change their policy and start doing this every year. Okay. Any questions for Eric or TJ? No. If not, uh, I'll entertain a motion on the floor. I'll make a motion to approve that. Dave Nevin first. Is there a second? I'll second it. Gary Heacock second. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, second item, I'd like to discuss the ice rink kit that I would like to purchase. Um, I'll get out some pictures so you can see a visual. The size of the rink that I'm looking at is a 72 by 128. It is made out of plywood, and the sideboards you're looking at, um, that's two feet, sideboards, two foot, and then you got four on the ends, four foot. And these outrigger brackets come with it. Everything installed, the brackets. Um, you can see the bottom piece here. And that, that's going to be the end, so it's a raised end, so the pucks don't fly out of the rink. Those are the outrigger brackets to make sure it's more stable on the ends for ice pressure. And then this is the final, um, the liner, it's six millimeter liner, um, very durable. I've read many reviews on it. These blue foam rolls um, are on there for holding down the liner and also protecting um, sharp edges from the plywood. And like I said, it's 72 feet by 128 feet. Um, I'll show you kind of a spot that I would like to place it at the community center. I don't have that with me. It, it would be on the um, west side of the warming house right now. If you go by the community center, you'll see fill for the pickleball courts on the east. And on the west side, you would see a spot where we could uh, put the rink. Um, I'm taking a peek at the lights right now. We're getting quotes on what it would take to um, upgrade our lighting system so we'd have proper lighting for this rink. And also, we, me and the maintenance guys, we went through the warming house, kind of clean everything up, got everything organized, put down um, rubber sheets to protect the skates. And uh, I would just need a motion to go ahead and purchase this. Pal agreed to pay 50% of the total. Um, everything all together is $3,600. So I think that's a fairly good deal um, in comparison to utilizing the pond. Um, we would have to wait till we get eight to 10 inches on the pond to to have our equipment on that. So with this rink kit, we'd be able to, um, as soon as we get it, put it up and get some ice rolling, so. Does it come down in the spring then, TJ? Um, I'd have to talk to the guys at Iron Sleek. That's obviously who makes this, uh, makes these kits. But I would, I would definitely look into it. Um, I don't think they're too hard to put up. So to preserve the wood, qu the quality of the wood, um, I would think we'd, um, take it down and we just store it in the warming house. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, does the fire department fill this then? 
or who f fill, fills this? No. Um, no, how do we get a fill? We, we can fill it. We have the we capabilities of, of flooding the rink. And actually, Corey, my maintenance guy, he actually has previous experience flooding okay. rinks. So. so he knows how to, he knows how to flood a rink. Yep. Okay. Uh, we Is do have... 600 the total cost or half? Correct. The total, total cost? Total cost. Right. Yep. So that's we with pay the 1800 and Pal pays 1800 Correct. That's with the plywood, brackets, um, the liner, so, and the foam roll. So. We do have a hockey parent in the audience tonight, and visual, I'm not very good visually, so how does this size uh, you know, feel for you, Mr. Hagerston, when you think of your kids running around on an ice rink? The, the full size of an ice rink... The full size of an ice rink is two, or 80 by 200 feet. Okay, okay. So I just had to make sure that those kids were going to have room to practice. <laughs> <laughs> and primarily this rink is going to be used for um, open skate, um, recreational hockey. It's not going to really be suitable for conduct hockey. The boards aren't high enough. We don't have plexiglass. But I was thinking um, later down the road, if, if this did get passed for Winterfest, we could... Um, yeah, broom ball. Broom ball is another option. But uh, in the future, maybe possibly this year if we get it in time, um, at Winterfest I would like to introduce pond hockey as a mm -hmm. tournament. So mm -hmm. that'd it be looks, another. It looks small from the pictures, so I'm thinking. Yeah, no, that's not the that's not the yeah. 72 by yeah. okay. 128. No, okay. it it would be much larger. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, any other questions for TJ? If not, I'll entertain a motion on the floor to recommend that we purchase the ice rink kit, splitting the cost with PAL. I'll make that motion. David Nevin first. I'll second it. Dave Shrupp second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Third item on my list, I have storage room for books. Um, this was recommended by the Parks and Library Commission. They requested to build a wall in the women's locker room to separate the locker room and the requested storage space. Uh, this space will hold the influx of donation books we receive. As of right now, we are no longer um, do or accepting donated or donation books. We're pretty much, in essence, turning down money. Um, we don't have the room right now at all for storage. So to put up this stud frame wall with sheetrock and a door, that's all we need to separate, I want to say I didn't measure, but it's about seven feet um, of space. And it would be suitable for stacking books, um, organizing it adequately. This will give us a lot more room so we can once again accept donating or donation books, um, which positively affects our revenue. So. Okay. And what's the cost of? I have not gotten a quote yet. OK. Anybody have any questions or comments for TJ? Do we want a cost estimate um, before we put a motion on the floor on this one? Who would do the work, TJ? I'd still have to reach out and, and figure that out. I know I have um, a, do a book or a um, door that would be donated to us, so that would kind of cut the cost. But um, I have money for it. It's coming out of the book sale money. Okay. Plenty of money. Um, I think it'd be a good source to use it. Okay. So yeah. approve it not to Ted? exceed 2,500 yeah. bucks or something. What did Ted say? It's something that we could handle, and he had a good point. In the winter months, when it's cold, it'd be a good project for for our guys to tackle. So. Um, okay. That's a good okay. idea. We would just have to buy the supplies, and once again, with the book sale money that we have accumulated over years. I think we'd have no problem. I don't, I don't think they'd spend over yeah. $500 if it's no. just yeah. material. Okay, good. Um, are there any other questions or comments for TJ regarding storage room for books? If not, we'll entertain a motion on the floor. I'll make that motion. Dave Nevin first. Second? I'll second it. Dave Shrupp second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Item number four, um, meeting room chairs and recumbent bike. We just previously um, got delivered 72 
meeting room chairs, brand new chairs. So right now we have an influx of 72 other chairs that we previously had. So we're trying to find, um, find out what to do with them. I'd like to request to either sell them or donate them to an outside entity. So if we can, I, I guess we could separate the motions between the chairs and the recumbent bike. We actually get, just got new um, fitness equipment as well and we got a new bike. So that recumbent bike is no longer being used. So we would sell that as surplus as well. Okay. Does it make any difference if we split them or can we just have it all in one motion? Yeah, we can make it all in one motion. Okay. okay. I'll make that motion. Dave Shrupp first. Is there a second? I'll second it. Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Can I just clarify, was that to sell or was that to donate? Um, Should sell. I? Sell. Sell. Okay. Sell? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, last little piece of information, I'll just uh, do some notable updates on my capital outlays. Um, irrigation is completed, fully installed. Fitness equipment delivered and installed. Utility vehicle, which is our gator, has arrived and we've been using it for two and a half weeks now. Um, senior meals equipment, that's installed. Tables and chairs, uh, that's ordered. The, ch the, table, the chairs that I was talking about, that's the 72. We're also getting 40 more chairs for the um, kitchen and also 15 car tables. So those are on their way. And the dog park is cleared and the fence is installed now. So Perfect. we're just waiting on the security camera to get there and then we'll, we'll I, I'm, I'm guessing in the spring we will do the grand opening with the security cameras and we'll be able, be able to utilize that. So. Um, do you want to just give a little brief update on what you did with the irrigation uh, system over yep. at the community center? Yep, so we went off the pump, the center field of the softball field, ran it southeast, um, down the west side of the tennis courts, went all the way down the south side of the tennis courts, up north on the east side of the tennis courts, and then ran it all the way down the front side of the community center. So um, in the spring, we will be doing everything on our power to make that look great with irrigation. So pretty excited about that. Okay, great. TJ, how about the dog park? Can you give a little how that got done? Um, Babinski and other outside sources really helped um, put that together. Babinski, I believe, agreed to 6,000 and they did a lot more work than 6,000. They actually um, took out, I think, seven or eight trees that I marked, um, took the Harley rake, got all the most of the roots out of the ground, and then actually put up the fence. And it's an acre lot that we actually put in the uh, dog park. So it's quite a bit of fence, and they got it done in two days. So props to those guys. Where did the fence come from? It was donated. From? Donated fence from an entity with Babinski. Okay, so I mean, we should just notice that they did a lot to get right. that done. Right, yep, yep, and they will be recognized in the opening. Um, and I want to touch base on, um, the, right now, it was in our minutes, and it was, you guys agreed to it, that it will not be open until we actually get a surveillance camera over there. Um, I'm trying to right now get quotes for that to see if that would, would even be possible yet this year. It's looking more like spring due to the frost is getting deeper and deeper in the ground. So. Um, it'd be awesome to get it this fall yet, but we're looking like in the spring for the grand opening. Okay. Good job. Great job. Thank you. Um, I noticed that on the police report, I think we had nine calls that were related to dogs. And <laughs> so perhaps someone the dog park is up, that will uh, help alleviate some of those questions <laughs> to our public safety. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Public Works, Mr. Strand. Good evening. Good evening. Um, first one on your um, agenda there is a rate increase for the sewers. Um, the commission was all in favor of it. It brought forward um, twice I brought it forward. I gave them some false information. I came forward, admitted to it, and then brought it back to them, and uh, they still were in favor of going forward with a $2 increase. So we go from 48 to $50 per ERU 
effective January 2019. Um, so I'd need a motion for that to make move forward with that. I'll make that motion. Hey there. Uh, first by Dave Shrupp. Is there a second? I'll second it. Gary Heacock, second. All those in favor of increasing the sewer usage rates from 48 to 50, um, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. The next one is um, we have a request in your packet there from the Lakes Foundation to refund the sewer charge. Um, the Lakes Foundation is essentially the charter school. Um, this summer when they started up their sprinkler system, somebody had uh, plumbed it wrong and they were taking their sprinkler water off after the meter. So all of the water they were sprinkling out in their yard that never went down the sewer, they got billed for. So they're asking for a refund of, uh, oh, I think we agreed to, what, $1,104. Um, I can show an example here. Have you ever refunded any other business? As of yet, this would be the first time we've ever refunded any other request. We've never refunded before to anybody. Um, so I don't know if we'd be setting a precedent or if you want to start this. It did go through the meter. That's how it has always been in the past. I did inform them. I realized this was happening, and as soon as I noticed it, which was just a couple days after they started their sprinkler system, I went to them and I told them that they had this hooked up wrong. So they were notified immediately. I, I saw that too. I was over there helping out and they had it. And all they used it for was irrigation in July and August to get the grass growing. So. Any other questions or comments for Ted? My only suggestion, I don't know what the council's thinking, but the findings should be based on not the good nature of the user, <laughs> but the fact that it was not, as you just heard, I mean, that it was a mistake and it was plumbed wrong and it was not, didn't go down or didn't affect our sewer system right. from a, in terms of pe setting precedent. We shouldn't be tr judging who's a better user than others. I mean, I'm guessing we all like the idea of a deterred school, but that shouldn't be really relevant to the discussion no but in the haste of setting it up and getting things going I mean I could certainly see how that could happen to anybody well, yeah. then that's a good find but businesses that have had this issue with their sprinkler systems and they have not been reimbursed do you have any idea what those costs were related to it some of them are extremely high some of them were running toilets, um, some were sprinkler systems. Well, running toilets would go through the sewer. Yes. Hey, Brad, can, can we legally do this being a 501c3? Well, that's why I don't know anything about past other than Char just brought it up. I, I've not been involved in any past disputes in Cross Lake. I've, I have been in other cities. but. I don't think you have the discretion to pick and choose. That's why I was saying that. Yeah. I mean, because I'm just—I was guessing ahead that you'd like to. I'm guessing favor the school more than anybody else in town, probably, or close to it. But that's not your role or your discretion to do. I mean, either if there's—if we can prove that they're, they were not used for septic purposes, that should be your finding. If and then, but then it should apply to if some other business that sounds like has happened before you should be willing to give them the same treatment is what I'm trying to suggest. Well, if it hasn't been run to the sewer, and I, is there any doubt of that, Ted? No, I no doubt in my mind it, this was on no. the yard. Yeah. I so witnessed it while it was running out, going out no of the yard. There were no costs incurred or anything. And he I saw would. the meters in the wrong place. I saw the meters in the wrong place. <coughs> I don't think I'm favoring the school. It's just it was installed incorrectly, and they... They watered in July and August, and in September they got charged the normal fee because school was back on, and in October, and I don't know what the November bill is. So, but the, it's been remedied now. They've corrected right. it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you totally have the discretion to do that based on those findings. I'm not saying you yeah. should or shouldn't, but that's right. totally a legit finding. It's just then be prepared to 
if you have other facts like it, I don't think you can distinguish at that point. Uh, I'm not saying that's a problem. <laughs> uh, you know, that's up to the council to decide. Well, I think we have, we actually could see some facts and proof that things weren't plumbed right here. The other ones I don't know anything about. So, but this one was very obvious. We could see what was wrong. And you so. went through this at Public Works at your last yes. meeting and yep. had a recommendation yes. from Public Works to refund the 1104, the Lake Foundation. I would make a motion to approve the refund based on the findings. There's a motion on the floor to approve the refund. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The last one I have in front of you is we are working on the road assessment and um, the chapter 42 of the code. Um, we're not quite there yet. We're almost. I wanted to get a copy in front of you so you all could read it and look through it. Please give me all your comments uh, on it that I, so we can add changes or anything you want us to look at. Um, I've asked the engineer to look at it also with me um, just to make sure we're in the right direction. Um, but we're just not quite there wet, ready with it yet, but we're close. I don't know, Mr. Shrupp has got something to add to it or? No, nope, I think the commission is digesting it and they wanted you to yep. review the document too. So. And this, and you also discussed this at length at your last public works. Yes. Yeah. Yep. One okay. of the things you'll note in there is we went with a 50% assessment policy. I'd, I'd like comments on that from you. From all, we have to do at least 20%, so it could be anywhere in that range. So, are there any dollar amounts to go along with that percentage amount, Ted? To no, we did not put a dollar amount. We didn't want to put a dollar amount in a in a. A city ordinance is what we were trying to avoid. Okay. The, the 50 is for reconstruction of an existing road. If it's a new road, it's 100. And there's some other percentages in there. Um, but it gets, we looked at a couple projects. One was Manhattan Point, one was Anchor, Anchor. Point. And, and we looked at the total cost at, uh, 50% uh, I believe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for Manhattan and there's there happens to be over 300 residents that would absorb that 50% cost so if we assessed them I'm sure they all would have paid the number it was about 980 bucks for that road each that and that would take care of the, the whole assessment right there 50% of it um, but then we went to Anchor Point and that number had there's fewer people there about less than half of that. So. Right, and, and the cost jumped up per unit, we'll just say, because there's different ways of figuring out what, how you're going to assess each lot. Um, and then you run into the issue of there's um, um, statements in the document that say you can't assess more than the value you would receive to your property. So there are some limits to what, you know, you just can't assess an yes. abnormal huge amount because it has to be a number that would uh, you'd see an appreciation in your project pro property as a result of the the new road so it has to be defendable it's in complicated and it's going to take us a little while to get how did you leave it though to do go back and study the last five projects or something and come we up just with looked at two average? we looked at two of them you know and we can look at more it isn't hard to do right I, w I was going to say maybe for the next review um, we can just shoot some examples up on the screen. We so can come up with them, use the yeah. is it projects we've done in the past, and give you some examples of that also. Okay. Mm -hmm. What a 50% assessment would look like on those projects. Okay. At this point, any other questions? I, I got one more comment yeah. on that. Before a road was done, it would come up to the public, and the assessments would be made public before the assessment came through, right? It has to. It has to, so people would know what their liability would be. Yes. The, hear, the, hear, the hearing and the project has already been initiated by the process, and at the point we get the initial plans, and, there, and we call a everybody in from the public, yeah, yeah feasibility, the feasibility would be done, and then we call in the public, and this is let them know at that time, so. Yeah. And, you know, then the council has the right to move forward or not, so. I think a dollar amount would make a lot more sense to people than 50% of what, so that's all. And okay. they would know that. 
as like I said, I, I look back just rough numbers on the last five projects, and it was anywhere from the lowest at 900 at Manhattan, a rate just right at thousand dollars, and I've seen as high as 3,600 dollars on a project. So I think it's a good idea to th put some numbers up just for us, recognizing okay. that we can't have the Ted. assessment. Yep. It's good. There's a lot to it. There's a lot. There's a lot to, to be it. Done. So. And Char. Yep. Yeah, we got to really thank Char for the, her yep. typing and all her assistance on it too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have anything more on the agenda. Just to let you go. You guys know we did a bunch of maintenance on the building here about a week and a half ago before it got cold, and literally some of the siding on this building is held on by caulking. There's nothing to nail it to back in the back and hold it on anymore. So I just want you guys aware of that. Okay. We're going to have to do something eventually here. And the day is coming, quick. Thank you, Ted. Um, now we'll have a report from the Personnel Committee. Sure, thank you. Um, as everyone was aware, you know, last month we, the council approved a, a new job description to help with uh, things down at the park and uh, library. And so through the month of uh, just recently, we advertised for the position that the council approved. We received eight applications, three of which were, we felt met the qualifications for the, for the position. And uh, certain members that were available of the personnel committee interviewed those three top candidates. So what I'd like to do is have TJ present his, his recommendation. And just so the um, council knows, We've already talked to this individual and they're willing to accept the position contingent upon council approval. So go ahead, TJ. Yep. On behalf of the personnel committee and myself, um, we'd recommend to appoint Jane Munson as the manager of parks and library. Um, we agreed upon the salary of $43,300 and it would be a six month adjustment period. And I call it an adjustment period because of those of you who don't know, Jane has been with us as the recreation coordinator for 18 years. Um, I can say with 100% no doubt, even with just a short period of working with her, that she will shine in this position and she will do an amazing job for the city of Cross Lake. So. What is the six month adjustment period, TJ? Just, well right now her job is a recreation coordinator, so with this new position she would be um, stepping forward into the library side of things. So it's just six month adjustment period. After that six month, we would sit down and talk about how things are going in the library and um, further discuss um, the salary and going forward with the position and with the, what the future of the position will look like. And is it an exclusive library position or is she it's multi? A floating between um, parks and library. But it's just adding that new angle to her position that she's not used to. So having that six month adjustment period just to see how things work out and, and we can meet up after three months and then after six months. So. And then who do you get at her desk to replace her <clears throat> in the time she's not there? I think what Mike and I talked about after getting her in this position, we can kind of sit down and talk about the most suitable option. Um, since she was at the front desk for 18 years, she would have some good advice and good input to what we need up there as she was, or as she's going to be absent. So ultimately, does that mean another position, another person? Um, I would say permanent part-time or look at my part-time employees right now to see if they would step up and work more, see if we could work an agreement with someone who's already there. If not, we can maybe possibly look outside for permanent part-time. Yeah, as far as is this a new position or are you adding headcount, I think is your real question. The answer is no. We're actually not had adding additional headcount through attrition. So what we're trying to do with this is to add some structure into the park at a, at a lower level so that there's a, a person that the volunteers or part-time staff can go to, go to to get questions answered in, in the absence of an authoritative paid staff. What we had experienced and we didn't know this, was that there were certain instances where we were putting our volunteers and our part-time staff to try to make uh, decisions for the city which they weren't authorized to do so. So with this, what, what we're hoping to accomplish is to add some clarity in an improved structure so we can operate more efficiently. And so, you know, time will tell. Do we need to, 
to revisit how we're staffing the part time. One of the things we've always struggled with at the park in Rex is, is finding qualified people to do the work um, that we needed to have done for the pay that we we're willing to pay them. And so by doing this, we were able to attract a, a group of people that were interested in that position and provide some opportunities for, for people going forward. So if it works, great. If it Would doesn't, part of we'll Jane's revisit. job be to cover that front desk or work both areas? Part of her job to start out with will to ensure stability in the library. So her, her home base will be the desk in the library. But that's not to say she will spend 100% of her time in the library. She'll spend more time there to start out with right. because that's where we need the most help and structure right now. Going forward, time will tell how that division is. And what we'll do is uh, keep track of how much time is spent where so we can get it recorded in the appropriate mm -hmm. department. And if we need to make adjustments, then we'll be coming back and saying, okay, here's what we found out. We tried this, here's what we need to modify it, or it's working great and we don't need to do anything. But from a headcount perspective, we're actually down headcount, we're not up. Yeah. Okay. I think to add on your question, um, this person will not be dealing with silver sneakers or miscellaneous questions that the patrons have when they come in through the door. So that will be out of that position. Just focused on um, the recreation park side and the library side, doing the, the meat behind the scenes instead of dealing well, with just Jane will do a great job. Yeah. Yeah. She has yeah. a great, great education in this area in, in 18 years, and yep. she's real excited to get into the job. Yes. So I, I think she was a enthusiastic uh, about the great new Great that we had somebody like mm -hmm. that here. So. Yep. so I'll make a motion that we agree with your recommendation. I'll second that. Any other questions or Comments before we move on the motion? All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. We're ready for another public forum. No action will be taken on any of the issues raised. If appropriate, the issues will be placed on the agenda of a future council meeting. Speaker must state their name and address. Each speaker is given a three minute time limit. Dan Hegerston, uh, then you see my address as well, 35533 Sandpoint Drive. Um, from what I understand, the council had a, or had a committee um, to determine a task force for these buildings um, or just a discussion with the five bugles. I didn't hear anything tonight, but is there a, there's, well, a six month time frame and something like that or where, where exactly is that uh, or don't we know? So if anybody could clarify that, I, I, I apologize if I missed it somewhere, but uh, I'd just like to have a little clarification. And secondarily, I mean, does that affect any talks? And at some point in time, there's talk about potentially purchasing next door, if that's all part of the, you know, talk. I just don't know where it is. So any light you can shed would be greatly appreciated. Sure. Um, we're in the process of establishing the committee. I've had some ideas from a, from a number of people on who should be on that committee, what should it look like, and then what, what should our objectives be so there will be more to come. But we don't have any progress to report right now. Six months is a legitimate time frame for that? Or I think long? so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, moving on to the city attorney report. Okay, the first thing there is the... Uh, we have a franchise, an existing franchise agreement with Excel. It's time to renew it. There's a draft in the uh, in your packet. I reviewed it. I don't really have any concerns. If I need a motion to approve that, or if you have any questions, I can try to answer them. And we do this every year. Well, every time we renew, is it's like a three-year. I don't. How long do you remember the last ten or ten year? Okay. It's not more, not as often as once a year, but. Okay. 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 Any other questions or comments for Brad before we make a motion on the floor? I'll make that motion. Okay, Gary Hecox first. Is there a second? I'll second it. Dave Shrupp second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. 
Next one, more of an, uh, an update, but also just the staff wanted to make sure we, after the update, there's no pushback from council in terms of just you know, know what's going on before we do it. You've already approved the concept of administrative fines, although it really hasn't come to a head much since you did that. So the, just to refresh your memories, the, there's things, it's often a zoning, zoning issues where Colstead tries to, you know, write letters and say you got to stop this or do that. And he tries and tries and nothing happens. <laughs> In the past, we could go to court and force them to comply, but that's expensive. And so the administrative fine is another way to do it where we can, by, by its title, do things administratively and avoid the court system. But they do have, to make it that legal, you, you have to give that to people rights to appeal. My experience, not just me, but any other city's experiences are that most people don't appeal and it just gets handled administratively and you'll never hear about it. They just pay the fine and then choose to comply rather than paying more fines. Uh, we do have a, a, a person in town, though, that has chosen to appeal. And so that means we need to pay, uh, get an administrative judge, basically another lawyer in the area that is willing to serve, but that's going to cost some money. It's still cheaper than going to court, but that person will make a decision after they hear the you know, the complaints of the landowner and city staff can explain, and it's like a little mini trial, uh, just cheaper than the real thing. So that's what we plan on doing, unless that makes council members squeamish and we can table or revisit that whole idea. Just wanted to make sure you know what's going on before we have this hearing. Thank you. Any I'm okay. hesitation on that? I'm okay. No. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, Lastly, just looking to go into close, a motion to go into closed session regarding uh, the item shown on the agenda. Okay. So at this time, we need a motion on the floor to move into a closed session. After that, we will adjourn this meeting. Is there a motion on the floor to move into a closed session? I'll make that motion. Dave Shrupp first. I'll second. Gary Heacock second. All those in favor of the motion on the floor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried.